All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Before we get started, just a couple of items to take care of. Uh, we will hopefully have time for questions at the end of the start or end of the presentation, and you can type those into the question box in the lower portion of your control panel. We will be posting a recording of the webinar online, but if you would like a copy of the presentation in PDF format, or if your question does not get answered today, please email our support inbox which will be shown at the end as well. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Coach Jake to get things started. Awesome, thank you, Shelby. And good afternoon, everybody. Unless you're west of us, then still good morning. Um, today, let's talk about something a little different. Issues like headaches are a unique topic for us to discuss on a webinar. If you've followed our webinars before, I think you might know what I mean. But it is our job as health coaches to help people like you and to get you on the right path to accomplish your goal. And as health coaches, we try to identify what might be a person's barrier. In other words, what might be holding you back from accomplishing your goal? It can be difficult for people to identify us. Sometimes it's not so obvious. A headache is something that can completely derail your progress towards a goal. If you're listening to this webinar, there's a pretty good chance you've experienced one of these nasty things. Let's say you have a goal of being more physically active. How much more difficult is that going to be to go running or to lift weights if you can barely open your eyes? What people don't realize is that there's something you can do about it. We can live a life that prevents them, and there are, and there are a few things we can do to get rid of them. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Did I just pause and I heard a beep? Okay. All right. So, but before we go any further, we need to say something. We're going to discuss something that can be clinical. And for this reason, we need to say this first. Headaches can be, well, a headache, but they can be an indication of something more serious. When in doubt, seek medical help if a headache lasts for an extended period of time or if symptoms get more severe. Also, a lot of over-the-counter and prescribed medication can be used as remedies or treatments towards headaches. As health coaches, we will not be discussing how and when to use these medications. Our goal for this webinar is to recognize and classify a headache then how to live a life that will reduce your chances of receiving a headache or how to reduce and potentially eliminate them. A headache is a condition that a large majority of us have experienced at some point in our lives. And again, if you clicked on this and you're listening to this, you probably have experienced them. The World Health Organization states that almost half adults worldwide will experience a headache in any given year. It's a lot of people. It is one of the most medical or the most common medical complaints at hospitals. So why do we have them? What is actually happening when we get a headache? What makes a headache unique is that even though it may feel like it, a headache is not actual pain in your brain. It's strange that headaches exist at all. The brain tells you when other parts of your body hurt, but itself, it can't feel pain. There are no pain nerves in the brain. Most headaches actually happen in the nerves, blood vessels, and muscle that cover a person's head or neck. These other areas of the head can hurt, including the network of nerves that extend over the scalp and certain nerves in your face, mouth, and throat. Also sensitive to pain are the muscles of the head and the blood vessels found along the surface at the, and at the base of the brain. As common as they are, they're still not very understood. They're different for everyone and they're caused by different reasons for each individual. Triggers are something that Shelby is gonna get into in a few slides. Triggers can be viewed as stimuli that is present or absent that can lead to a headache. These are what makes headaches very unique in that they range from person to person. Constricted blood vessels in the head can lead to a headache, 
but also too much blood flow or dilated blood vessels can lead to a headache. Blood sugar can also is a major role for headaches. Again, this can be from it being too low or too high. Muscles around the head and neck can pull certain parts of the head that can lead to a headache. There are a lot of other factors. Some of these can be harder to control, such as your environment, hormones, and one we can't do anything at all about, genetics. Let's define two major types of headaches, primary and secondary. Primary headaches are the direct problem with structures of the head that are pain sensitive. These can be migraines, cluster headache, or tension headaches. A bigger group and something that we're gonna discuss more of today are secondary headaches. Secondary headaches are caused when another condition that are that pain sensitive nerves of the head. In other words, headaches are attributed to another cause, such as, I'm gonna read a couple down here. Think of a sinus infection, which inflammation is present and there's pressure in your sinus cavity. Another one, alcohol, which leads to a hangover. What is a hangover? It's a combination of dehydration, low blood sugar, constricted blood vessels, and inflammation. A more common one may be brain freeze. After consuming something cold, the blood vessels in the roof of your mouth are constricted. That's why we get brain freeze. It's a little headache. Teeth grinding or TMJ, which is the tightening of muscles that control your jaw. So let's just to, just to prove my point a little bit here. Right now, go ahead and touch the side of your head or your temple. Now open and close your mouth. You'll feel these muscles moving. That tightening is what can give us a headache. Other things like acute sicknesses like a cold or flu, which pretty much affects your entire body, but especially blood sugar and inflammation. A panic attack. Panic attack fires your fight or flight in your body. Fight or flight then leads to heavy breathing, elevated blood sugar, dilated blood vessels, dilated blood vessels to your muscles and more importantly, your brain. And the last thing I'm gonna mention here, it is more of a serious issue, but it could be damage. Damage that is occurring in the brain. This could be a concussion, brain tumor, or blood clot. Again, these are much rarer, but still a possibility if you're having pain for an extended period of time or if they become more painful. Even though headaches are a pain that can be difficult to avoid, we can live a life that will reduce the severity or prevent them from happening. And Shelby is gonna dive more into this. All right, thanks, Jake. So now we know some of the science behind the headaches, what they actually are, and some different types that are out there. So like Jake said, the next question is, what can you do to help yourself? The answer is a lot. There are many different aspects of our lifestyle that can help or hurt us from a headache standpoint. An important thing to remember is again, headaches are very complex. So there could be multiple factors that are causing your headache. And what causes a headache for you may not cause a headache for your coworker, for example. Everyone is going to be different. But we're gonna do the best we can today to give you some ideas of places to look. The first step I would like you to take is to simply attempt to determine what I just said where those headaches may be coming from, or the triggers. That's where a headache diary can come in. Writing down when a headache occurs, how long it lasts, how intense it was, and what you were doing, drinking, eating, or thinking just before are crucial for you and your doctor, if you're working with one, to help to start treat the underlying factors. If you go to headaches.org, they actually have a template that you can use to start tracking your headaches. Now, please don't underestimate this step. It will help set you up for success. It's just like you've heard us say about eating, exercise, sleep, and other things in other webinars. You need to know where you are now to know where you're going and the best path to take. Also, if and when you do start, find some, start to find some changes that you wanna make, be sure to only make one change at a time. This is because you want to find the change that actually helps. If you make seven changes, you don't know which one was the trigger. You may be cutting out things that don't necessarily need to be cut out. 
So make one change at a time. Jake's going to talk about his experience with this and finding his triggers. Absolutely. All right. So what made me really want to do this webinar uh, with Shelby is that I've suffered from migraines a majority of my life. If you're a fellow migraine sufferer, <laughs> I hear you and I feel you. We are in our own little club, and I know right now you're nodding your head. Okay, so my personal story about migraines is they started when I was younger, and I would primarily get them when I would fly. They were the type of migraines where my head would hurt really, really bad, and I would actually throw up. Uh, I would put myself in a dark room, and it was hard to sleep. When I was in college, I did a lot of research on these headaches, and I found them very fascinating because of this idea of a trigger. Triggers don't make sense sometimes. There's no direct connection, and, um, and my point will be proven here in a second that they're, they're very unique. My migraines progress in what's called migraine auras. They are much more rare, and only about 10% of people who have migraines have auras, and that's even rarer for males. I, I guess I'm just that lucky. What auras are, or I actually don't get a headache anymore. I get confused, my memory's foggy, and I can't see. I get these bright, jagged shapes that blocks my vision, and I literally can't see anything. Um, I saw neurologists. I had an MRI and everything. When they found nothing, I actually decided to that I needed to figure out on my own. As a health coach, we never just accept that's just the way it goes. So I started to look for triggers. I didn't have or didn't have a great resource like headaches.org, and one of the first times I heard about it was when Shelby and I were going through this presentation. Looking through it, I, it's very, very helpful. I didn't have the resources like headaches.org, but I knew of triggers. I was getting them about once every, every month. I thought maybe it was stress, then I got one on vacation. I thought it might have been ice in my water, so I started drinking, or, I started drinking only warm or hot water, I still got another one. After months of trying to figure out what caused this painful experience, I found out that reading a website with black background with white lettering was causing an aura. So think about one of those websites that is a, it's a negative. So again, a black background, white lettering. So backwards from what we normally used to. It got to the point where I had to actually copy and paste websites like this into Word just so I could read it. Now, the reasons for me telling you this are, what are the odds that it'll fix your migraine? Not, not very good. But I wanted to share this because it might take a while to figure it out, but you can find a way and you can give yourself a chance to avoid these nasty things. Perfect, yeah, so again, that just shows you how different it is. And again, we're gonna go through today with some different lifestyle factors for you to keep an eye on specifically. So that's what we're gonna get into now. Um, I'm going to start with nutrition. Again, there are going to be things on this list that don't seem to affect you at all, and that's okay. And hopefully a lot of these things won't affect you. Hopefully you'll be able to find those one or two triggers right away. But these are just some of the triggers that research has found to be common in headache sufferers. So we're going to focus on those today. Tyramine is the first substance I'm going to talk about. This is a well-accepted migraine trigger, trigger, so chances are this could be a trigger for you. Tyramine, tyramine is a substance that is found naturally. It is not added to foods. It is produced in foods from the natural breakdown of the amino acid tyrosine. These levels increase in foods as they are aged, fermented, stored for long periods of time, or are not fresh. So I'm gonna take a look at a couple of examples and what to look out for. If you do want a full list of foods, please visit that same website we're already talking about, headaches.org, um, and you can find a full list of some foods to, to take a look at. Again, a note, this is just a list for tyramine levels, which is a common trigger, but that doesn't mean it's the only list of foods to be aware of. So again, be sure you're diligent in tracking so you can determine if there are other ingredients or foods that may be on your specific trigger list. So as far as foods that have a large amount of tyramine, a couple aged cheese and meats are big ones. So things like packaged meats, hot dogs, certain lunch meats. If you're gonna do deli meat, go to that fresh deli counter um, at your grocery store. And then be careful of, again, aged, dried, fermented, salted, smoked, or pickled proteins. Now this makes sense, right? Since I just told you that the levels increase when things are aged, and that's exactly what is the process for a lot of those foods. 
And so just be mindful when you're picking out those proteins. Some other foods that are kind of produced in similar ways, sauerkraut, pickles, olives, fermented beverages, uh, things like soy sauce or teriyaki sauce are higher in that tyramine. So again, do some tracking. See if these specific foods or other foods with tyramine are going to be a trigger for you. Other nutrition-related tips, eat regularly throughout the day. Don't skip meals. When we skip meals, our blood sugar drops, which Jake just said, can cause those headaches. Also, don't skip your water breaks. Again, Jake talked about how dehydration occurs in the body and how, it's, how it can cause headaches. When our body loses water faster than it can be replenished, the brain can actually temporary, temporarily shrink from fluid loss. And then so what happens, as Jake said, the brain doesn't have pain sensitivity, but it pulls away from the skull, which causes the pain in the actual skull resulting in your headache. Ouch, right? So keep drinking lots of water, eating water-rich foods, especially if you're in hotter temperatures. Food additives are also something to be careful of. An example is nitrates and nitrites. These are found, again, in those packaged meats that I mentioned a few minutes ago and some other foods, so make sure reading the labels is always a good thing. These substances dilate the blood vessels, which, again, can trigger those headaches in some people. Along the same lines, artificial sweeteners have been linked to headaches in some people and some research as well. Also, MSG, which has been taken out of a lot of foods because there's some other not-so-good factors, but still present in some, so that's another additive to be aware of. Cold foods. Jake talked about those brain freezes as well. When we get those ice cream headaches, they are not fun. You're especially susceptible to these kind of headaches if you have been working out or in a hot environment. So while I just said I want you to drink a bunch of water and make sure that you don't get dehydrated, you need to take it slow if your beverages are cold. Take it easy, drink it nice and slow to prevent that uncomfortable feeling. Caffeine is an interesting one. Small amounts may actually improve migraines, but a lot of times we get caffeine withdrawal headaches because we have been drinking too much in the first place. So most of the time, if you limit your caffeine, you should be okay on that aspect. Cleveland Clinic recommends limiting to it about 200 milligrams a day, which is about one to two cups of coffee, depending on the type and size and all that stuff. Um, alcohol, that's another interesting one. Just the act of drinking alcohol may be a trigger. Again, Jake talked about that, that dehydration. Um, and some other research states that headaches may occur as our body metabolizes alcohol. Wine is noted specifically as more of a risk with that metabolizing. Now, I mentioned you shouldn't change everything at once so you can figure out what those triggers are, right? Some of you may chat with your doctor and they may actually have you do something of an opposite approach to begin with, but it ends up being the same thing in the end. It's called an elimination diet. This is where you would take out all of the foods that you think may be a trigger and then you add them back in one by one to see if you start experiencing those symptoms again, which in our case are those headaches. So there are a few different ways to approach your triggers with eating and it doesn't matter what route you choose. The most important thing is to start tracking and actually take some steps to hopefully feel better. Like Jake said, it can take a while sometimes, but you have to start somewhere. All right, let's move on to some other lifestyle factors to consider. How about exercise and activity? How can they trigger or help headaches? Now exercise, if you are doing an intense activity, can be a trigger due to some increased blood pressure. The key to exercise helping relieve headaches is the consistency. Because exercise that increases our heart rate is beneficial to us in so many ways, those effects can help lessen headache severity and frequency. It's gonna lower your blood pressure, it keeps our blood sugar stable, and improves sleep, and improves mood, helps reduce stress, it releases endorphins, which are those body's natural painkillers and mood improvers. So moderate intensity exercise is a great way to help headaches overall. General recommendation for exercise is 30 minutes most days of the week. So see where you are now and build up to that goal. A couple tips to be sure that exercise doesn't end up triggering a headache. First, be sure you're gonna do a proper warm up. About five minutes of walking or jogging can get that body ready if you're gonna do a more intense exercise session. Also, again, be sure to drink enough water before, during, and after exercise for that dehydration reasons we already mentioned. And again, if it's a cold drink, make sure you take it nice and slow. Exercise does lower the blood sugar, which I've already said, which we know can be a trigger. So just make sure that you've eaten properly throughout the day. We don't want that blood sugar to go too low because of exercise. 
Stretching is the fantastic addition to any health regimen and can be specifically helpful for headaches as well. A lot of headaches are the result of the muscles and joints around the upper neck becoming too tight, putting pressure on those nerves at the top of the spine. So gentle stretching of those neck muscles can be great at helping relieve that specific trigger. So I did include a few stretches today that you can do at your desk or at home, wherever you want to, may want to do them. Now, if you have prior neck or any issues, please see your doctor before doing any of these stretches, um, but, and also do all of these with good posture. For the first one, simple. Just simply bring your chin down to your chest to stretch the back of the neck. You're going to hold these for about 20 to 30 seconds. An extension to this is slightly turning your head to the side about 20 to 30 degrees as you turn, and excuse me, and as you turn, use your hand to lift the chin up just a little bit. Now the goal here, if you put your other hand on the base of your skull, you should feel that stretch right there as you turn. You're gonna hold this for about five to seconds on each side and then repeat as necessary if you're pretty tight. The next stretch gets us into the side of the neck, reaching over the top of the head, gently pull your head to one side, bringing that ear towards your shoulder. Again, 20 to 30 seconds for each side and repeat a couple times if needed. Next stretch is a rotation stretch. So you're gonna turn your head to the left and look over your shoulder as far as is comfortable or when you start feeling that stretch. This one you're only gonna hold for about two to three seconds and then you're gonna to turn to the other side. But you're gonna to wanna to repeat this up to about 10 times or so. And then it's not on here, but you can end with some shoulder rolls, forward and backwards, just to loosen those muscles up even further. And again, I mentioned posture at the beginning of the stretching. Poor posture is unfortunately a great way to tighten up those muscles and trigger a headache as well. So be sure that you're paying attention to how you're sitting throughout your day in the ergonomics that you've got. If you have someone in your company that is training in that area, especially if you've got a desk job, definitely take advantage to see if there are ways you can improve either your desk or your workstation so that you can improve that posture throughout the day. And just a real quick side note, yoga is another great form of stretching and general exercise. So keep that in mind as an option as well if you've got a local yoga studio or classes at your gym. Lots of different options. But again, stretching is a huge improvement and can be a big trigger for a lot of us. All right, moving on to the last couple areas of lifestyle that can affect headaches. First is sleep. Too little sleep is one that should make sense for most of us. If we get too little sleep, our body can't reset itself. We get some not so good hormones released, our mood changes, we make poor decisions when it comes to eating and exercise, all of which can trigger those headaches. An interesting fact, loss of sleep also lowers our pain threshold, which could be the difference between getting a headache and not getting one, right? Too much sleep can also increase the severity of our headaches. According to the American Migraine Foundation, seven to eight hours of sleep is optimal for those that do suffer from headaches. Again, this is gonna be different depending on the person, but that's what they found in their research. Now, just because you're in bed for seven to eight hours doesn't mean your sleep is okay. Things like snoring are a risk factor for headaches as well. Your quality of sleep is just as important as that length. So if you are a snorer, please chat with your doctor about some options to help as well. Another possible sleep factor is actually a really simple fix, and that's your pillow. Tension headaches happen when your neck and scalp muscles are strained, especially when they're in that position for a long period of time, say like when you're asleep for seven to eight hours. You need a pillow that keeps your head and neck in alignment. A side note to this, we have suggested in past webinars to make your room as cool, make, your room, make sure your room is cool enough for good quality sleep, but we can go too far with that as well. So be sure you're keeping the temperature between 60 and 67 degrees, which is the suggested temperature for optimal sleep. Another sleep factor that could trigger headaches is grinding your teeth. Again, Jake talk, touched on this a little bit here. When you clench your jaw and or grind your teeth, it causes that tension that we mentioned before can cause those headaches. Stress management is one of the best ways to help with teeth grinding, which is a perfect transition because it just so happens that I'm going to talk about that next. But for more information on better sleep quality and to learn more about healthy bedtime and sleep habits that can help that quality of sleep, which in turn can help our headaches, please visit our blog and look back to the March 2016 webinar that we did specifically on sleep. Okay, on to stress. Stress, as we all know, can wreak havoc in our lives and can directly or indirectly cause us headaches. 
indirectly when we have stress. Some of us skip meals, eat unhealthy foods, lack on our sleep, et cetera, all of these things which we now know are linked to causing headaches. I just told you that, right? Stress can directly cause headaches by releasing those fight or flight chemicals. Those chemicals can cause vascular changes, meaning changes in our blood vessels, which can trigger headaches. So for many reasons, not just our headaches, dealing with the stress that we all know we will have in our lives in a healthy way is very important. I've included just a few methods for you to try, but this is by no means everything you can do to help your stress. Again, we've done past webinars on this. You can go on our blog again to take a look at some of those other options. So the options I jotted started, down, started with progressive relaxation. This is a technique where you focus on different parts of your body. First, you tense them and then you relax them so you can feel the difference when they relax. Because a lot of times we keep our tension in our muscles and we don't even know it. So just take your hand as an example. Take your hand, squeeze it into a fist as hard as you can for eight seconds. Do this as you inhale. And then as you exhale, relax your hand and feel those muscles relax. Do this with all of your muscle groups, but for today's purposes, you can focus on those that are prone to holding stress and they can trigger headaches, like shoulders, neck, your jaw, things like that. I know when I do this, I'm surprised at how high I hold my shoulders and how relaxed they should actually be and what position they should actually be in when I'm not tensed up. Breathing exercises are another stress management technique that most of you are probably familiar with. There are many different ways to breathe, things like rhythmic, rhythmic breathing, where you simply slow down your breathing, say you count to five as you inhale, five as you exhale. You can do more deep breathing, where you place your hand on your belly and you breathe so that your hand rises and falls as you breathe, and you can feel that deep breath coming in and going out. You can do visualized breathing as well, where you close your eyes when you breathe, and then you picture and visualize that air coming into your body and then leaving, imagining breathing out that tension. Guided imagery is a more in-depth visual, visualization process that can be very helpful as well. With this, basically just imagine a pleasant experience or a soothing environment. Concentrate on the details of this environment. That's the key, because as you do, your mind becomes focused on this task and it can help you lessen the stress that your mind and your body are feeling. There are some really, really good meditation and um, visual, visualization apps out there. So take a look. There's a lot of free ones, too, that you can use. Uh, they can be a minute long. They can be 20 minutes long. As long as you want, you can find a lot of different ways uh, to work on that, that visualization and meditation. A couple additional ones here. Biofeedback. That's a technique that you would need to contact a professional to do, but it can be valuable, which is why I'm mentioning it. So basically, this one uses actual devices to measure the processes in your body when you're stressed, like breathing rate, heart rate, skin temperature, things like that. The goal is to learn how your body responds to stress and then helps you learn how to gain control over those processes. Cognitive therapy, this again, clinical setting where you'd meet with a counselor to help recognize some negative thoughts that can lead to stress, which in turn leads to that tension, and as we know, lead, can lead to headaches. We've also got physical therapy, massage therapy, acupuncture, and much more that we just don't have time to cover. Again, be your own expert. Do some research and see if there may be some options for you to try to help relieve some stress and hopefully help those headaches. All right, there are more options with headaches on the medical side as well. There are over-the-counter medications, doctor-prescribed medications, herbal supplements. Jake touched on this. He said, we can't, we can't speak about these, but this would be a great conversation to have with your doctor if you have tried some of the lifestyle suggestions and then are still, still are not finding relief. And then again, knowing when to see your doctor is very important. There's, these are just a few places where you're going to want to go chat with your doctor. If your headache becomes more than just the occasional headache, if they're getting severe or come on very quickly, if they're accompanied by those symptoms I have listed right there, if the headache just won't stop or is getting progressively worse, if it interferes with your daily life, if medication is not helping, if you are on medication for it, when coughing, sneezing, bending over, exercise, sexual activity cause a headache, if it happens after you've had a head injury or trauma, or simply that the characteristics of your headaches or your symptoms start to change. You know best when you just don't feel right, so don't hesitate to talk to your doctor when it comes to your health. Like Jake said, headaches can affect everything in our lives, so we want to make sure we're doing the best that we can to help them. So, all right, hopefully we've given you some ideas to take a look at today. 
So your goal is to track those triggers, look at some lifestyle factors that may help, and get to work. So we're going to open it up for questions here. We've got just about a minute, but I do want to let you know what webinars are coming up next. Next month, living healthy on a budget. We're going to talk about eating, exercise, all these things, because people tell us every day how expensive it is to be healthy. We're going to try to prove you wrong a little bit there. Mm -hmm. um, and then in November, navigating wellness. This is an interesting one. We want to try to find reliable health information. So we're going to give you tips how to sift through all the online health information to find good quality resources, and then also how to decode health claims that are actually on your food packaging. That should be a short, easy one. Just call me. Yeah, <laughs> just call Jake and he'll let you know. And uh, I'm willing to stick around a little bit longer to ask questions too, uh, if you have yep. to go, understand. But uh, we'll, uh, I'll make sure I answer a couple of questions here too. Perfect. And we're going to leave this up here too. Um, this is our contact information. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, that blog. That's where you're going to be able to find the recording of this webinar and all our other webinars. We're on Instagram. Um, and then, like Jake said, give him a call. Here's our number, here's our email. We'd be more than happy to chat with you. All right, we're going to open it up to questions here. Give us just a second.